Ah yes, Botox, the elixir of youth, and the foundation of any lengthy career in Hollywood. The popular injection is now a household name, which has embedded itself as deeply in popular culture as it has the foreheads of the extended Kardashian-Jenner family. Last week, while scrolling through the depths of the Twitter hellscape, I saw this tweet. I'm no expert in Danish cheese enzymes, but being Irish, I know mayo. In fact, I know the very small town in question. Yes, I know Westport. I've been in Westport. I've lived an hour away from Westport, but I didn't know this. After verifying the information with a quick Google search, I needed to find out more. So I went digging. Botox, or the botulinum neurotoxin, is a neurotoxic protein produced by the bacterium Clostridium botulinum, but that didn't quite have the mass market appeal. First used as a cosmetic treatment in 1989, Botox has since gone on to change the face of humanity. In addition to preventing fine lines and a person's ability to show facial expression, Botox is also used as a treatment for migraines. Cosmetic Botox will likely set you back a pretty penny. Roughly 500 US dollars worth of pretty pennies to be exact. Now back to Westport. Google it and you're likely to come across this Westport in Connecticut. But pay that place no heed, as even if it is the top ranked public school district in all of Connecticut, the Westport in question happens to be a small town on the west coast of Ireland. Here you'll find sleepy streets interrupted by the occasional hen party and stag do. Venture down these sleepy streets far enough and you'll come across the AbV pharmaceutical facility, employing an impressive 1,400 workers, or about a quarter of the town's entire population. It's in this pharmaceutical compound that the entire world supply of Botox is produced. However, much like Tipex or Coca-Cola, Botox is actually just a brand name, and while alternatives do exist, their domination of the market has led to their brand name becoming somewhat ubiquitous of an entire industry. Now, AbbVie's decision to make the entire world supply of Botox in such a small town was always sure to raise at least a few eyebrows. So why did they? Why would a big pharma company decide to come to little old Westport in the first place when there is a perfectly good Westport four times its size in AbbVie's home nation of the US? Well, there is likely a few reasons. First, it's no secret that Ireland have one of the most tax-friendly environments for big multinational companies, and that includes Big Pharma. Each of the top 10 biggest firms operate in Ireland, and thus working between these companies on a relatively small island in Europe must also prove somewhat convenient for them too. It should be noted that while Westport Ireland isn't the top-ranked school district in Connecticut, Ireland still boasts one of the most educated workforces in the world currently ranked third for the percentage of adult population with a third level degree. Ireland also has some pretty good trade links with the EU and beyond, so there is already an established market for firms operating in the country. And when it comes to transporting goods, size matters, and Westport, despite being on the opposite coast to Dublin, is only about a three hour drive or train ride from the capital. And speaking of size, Westport isn't the only small Irish town exclusively manufacturing the world supply of a world famous drug. The small village of Rinkaskiddy in Cork also produces the entire world's supply of Viagra. As such, it has taken on the unfortunate moniker of Viagra Falls. And if all these statistics are giving you a headache, Dungarvan in the southeast of Ireland produces 85% of all Panadol tablets, usually in excess of 6 billion a year. Thankfully, it seems the small town of Westport will be able to keep it up moving into the future, as AbbVie have recently expanded their manufacturing plant to increase output in an effort to keep up with growing demand for the drug worldwide. For such a small country, Ireland certainly punches well above its weight in the realm of pharmaceuticals, being the eighth largest export market in the world, and only marginally behind much larger economies such as the US. And while this clearly has a positive effect on employment figures and by consequence the economy, it also can have an impact on the environment. In the town I went to secondary school, there was a rumour that the local Pfizer plant used more water than the entire town combined. I always thought that was pretty insane as a kid, but when I checked the figures online, I saw that in 2016 the plant actually used 216,000 megalitres of water, a megalitre being equivalent to a million litres of water. 
taking the average Irish person to use approximately 150 litres in a day. The plant's output equates to roughly the same amount 4 million Irish people would use in a year. So a little bit more than the town of 20,000 where I went to school. Now to be fair, Pfizer do say that their water usage at the plant is decreasing and that most of the water is recycled. However, the very article itself was sponsored by none other than Pfizer themselves. So take from that what you may. So do you know anywhere punching above its productive weight? Why not let me know in the comments? And to watch some more poorly edited content, click here. Either way, I hope to catch you again on the flip side.